Hey guys, welcome back to Willpower Garage. Today I've got a 2006 Audi A4 2 liter FSI motor and I'm going to show you how to do the timer belt water pump and also get this thing into service position so you can even get access to those things. Come along, I'll show you guys how it's done. If you're looking at this video, chances are you already know to get to the timer belt, there is no room here. I mean, my hands aren't terribly large, but uh, you know, make a fist, I can't even get my hand in there. So the first step we have to do is we need to get this thing at the service position. And I'm pretty sure I have a video up on how to do that. Um, but just in case, uh, I'll give you guys the quick rundown of what we need to do to get the bumper cover off and to get the core support, support into service position. It's actually not that difficult. So basically what you need to do from the fender liner, there are some Torx bolts here that you need to take off. And then depending on the model, there's usually uh, bolts that uh, come from the inside of the fender. You need to get from behind the, the wheel liner. Get those nuts off. Again, same thing with these on the side. Then what you have to do is remove the belly pan shield. And this one's got a big aluminum one, but most of them are plastic. And the bumper cover is also attached to the belly shield. So you'll have to remove that before you can remove the bumper cover. Be careful when you remove the bumper cover. Uh, disconnect all the electrical connections that are on the bumper itself. If you have headlight washers, there's usually a common line where they come in on one side. Uh, some of them also have uh, one big connector that you only have to disconnect, so you don't have to disconnect everything. Once that is off, then what you're going to do is you're going to remove the impact bumper. And then finally, you can remove the T30s up here, and the core support will tilt forward. I don't know if I could if I could show you here. I'll show you guys later on. But there's actually brackets on both sides uh, where the core support itself is attached to, and they're made to pivot so you can tilt this thing forward. Now, keep in mind you're going to be limited by the amount of length you have in the hoses here. So if you're not planning on draining the radiator for whatever reason, you just need to get into access that. Um, you know, just be careful with the connections on the radiator itself. It is plastic. You don't want to break those. So first thing first, I'm gonna get this thing in service position and then uh, I'll show you guys how we start getting to the time belt. All right, some quick things I wanted to point out about removing uh, the front bumper cover on this thing to get it in the service position. Uh, one, there is a, another bolt hidden underneath the splash shield that I did not mention before. You have the two that were on the splash shield, but there's another on a bracket for both sides. Um, this particular model has two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the bumper to the front fender. And then there is a long triple square bolt that comes in through here through the front grill that you need to remove to uh, get the impact bumper off. Uh, you can do it one or two ways. You can leave the impact bumper on the bumper cover, uh, which is what I did. Or there's a, a really narrow hole that comes somewhere around the headlight here where you can get a screwdriver in and loosen up the little bushing that holds it. It basically adjusts the height of the bumper to be even with the headlight. I usually don't mess around with that at all. Uh, just take this off, take the impact bumper off with it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So the next step that I need to do to get this core support uh, located forward is I'm going to remove the actual impact strut here. Um, so it's got usually on average either three or four bolts and then a 10 millimeter bolt that holds this to the core support. Uh, you can leave that on, you can leave the struts on, uh, but I'm going to take them all the way off. 
Uh, you can see a little better in the light here. There's that 10 millimeter nut I was talking about. And then here's the three bolts that I'm gonna have to remove. Once you remove this, the core support's gonna wanna drop down. So just, just be mindful of that. Uh, it won't fall off because you're gonna leave these two bolts in place until you're ready to tilt this thing forward and out of the way. And again, make sure you're very careful with all the lines going to the core support and your evaporator. You don't wanna break those off. Um, speaking of, the other one that you probably want to take off besides the rubber ducts here to get to the intercoolers is the power steering cooling line here. Uh, as you can see, there's a T30 back there. I'm going to loosen that thing up so I get a little flexibility out of this thing. I don't want this to break off. There's usually a bolt. There it is. Small little uh, Torx bolt right there to get that up and out of the way. And uh, like I said, basically we're just going to tilt this forward. The headlights are going to stay in place. Probably disconnect the electrical connections here and to the headlights so I have a little more room. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing forward real quick. And then I'll show you guys the next step. Alright guys, I know this looks crazy. And I promise you it did not take me very long to do this. Uh, but this is service position. Um... Yeah, <laughs> as you can see, now I have all the access to the front of the motor I need. Um, headlights are disconnected. I disconnected the front crash sensors. That's what the yellow connectors are. If you're not sure how to disconnect them, you have to push in the release to get these to come out. Uh, there's one on each side, and there's the other yellow connector. Uh, again, I disconnected the headlight harness, the fan connectors, and the other thing I disconnected was the hood release because that cable is not long enough to bring uh, the core support down this far. Uh, I went ahead and I disconnected the radiator hoses. Um, like I said, you don't need to. Uh, obviously, it won't come down as far as I have it now. But I am also replacing the radiator. Um, basically, to replace the radiator, uh, you just need to take the impact bumper off and such. Uh, you, if it's an automatic, you do need to get to the cooler lines. Uh, they're held in with two 5mm bolts on either side. Um, and then just the two radiator hoses. It's basically that. It's, it's not too difficult. Um, but that's why I went ahead and I disconnected my radiator hoses because I need to replace the radiator anyway. So, now that I have full access to the front of the motor, obviously the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to release my tensioner. Um, these are pretty nifty because it has this little hole drilled into it that correlates to this. When you, when you loosen the tensioner, you can stick a pin through here. It will keep it released. Uh, makes it easier so you can round the belt and then release the tensioner. So I have a little pin that goes in there. You can use a drill bit, something. It just, it just needs to go through these two to hold it in place. Once I have that off, I'm going to disconnect the tensioner itself to get it out of my way. I'm going to remove my top cover here. Uh, as you can see, I've got two bolts missing already, uh, but I'm gonna take the rest of the bolts off. I'm gonna set this thing at top dead center. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because the car was running. Um, this is probably the easiest scenario of putting a timing belt on and making sure it's done correctly. Uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this thing at top dead center. I'm then gonna mark the old belt before I remove it, I'm gonna mark the sprockets, even though they'll already be marked, the, the sprockets themselves, they're normal timing marks, but I'm gonna use a, a white paint pen. I'm gonna mark the belt to the sprocket on the top and the bottom. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that belt with those marks and I'm gonna transfer them to the new belt so I have exactly the same amount of teeth between those marks. As long as I put the marks from the old belt to the new belt and then line the new belt up with the old marks this thing should be perfectly timed I sh there should be no question of doubt that it's timed perfectly um, so that being said I'm gonna take all this stuff off and we'll get to the timing belt
All right, so all the covers are off now. As you can see, you get full access to the timing belt. And like I said earlier, here's my marks. This is the um, top dead center mark for the camshaft. Lines up with that mark on the cover. And I marked the belt here so I know where that mark is. And then the crankshaft sprocket, same thing. I made two marks on the belt and on the sprocket so I know where they are. So at this point, I'm gonna loosen up the tensioner. I'm gonna remove it, take the two idlers off because we're gonna replace those as well. And then finally I can go and I can remove the water pump and replace it because I'm gonna replace it since we're all the way here. So from here I'm gonna take the belt off, uh, get everything else off and probably swapped over. And then I'll show you uh, how I transfer these marks to the new belt. Okay, so I have both belts here. I've got the old one, here's my new one. Uh, pet peeve of mine is I like to make sure that the writing is facing forward when you install the timing belt. So that's the way I'm gonna transfer the marks. Uh, here's my camshaft mark, and these are my crankshaft marks. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by marking one of the teeth here and I'm basically just going to match the tooth pattern up on the belt all the way around. And then mark the other two. Double check to make sure. There we have it. So now my belt is marked. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to reinstall this on the motor and I'll show you how to tension this thing properly. So the belt is now on my camshaft sprocket the way it should be. It's back on my crank sprocket where it should be. And if you notice, I have the idler rollers off. And I do that because the belt is pretty tight as it is. Um, and it makes it a little easier to get on. Uh, so from this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install both the top and lower roller. And then I'm going to tension the main tensioner here. So I wanted to show you exactly what we're trying to uh, set on the tensioner here for the timing belt so you get the proper timing belt tensioning. If you see that little green raised portion there and the notch that's right there, we're basically going to rotate this in this clockwise direction till these two marks line up. And the best I could do is I could show you from the flag that comes behind, but basically going to get rotated around till it's almost there and you can see the two are lined up it doesn't really matter what position this ends up in this is irrelevant just make sure that the notch there lines up with the green dot there so I'll show you how it is on the car now so as you can see I've got my notches lined up there I also put blue Loctite on the stud on the nut and I'm going to tighten this down to torque um, you can see I use the ratchet here to get it uh, tensioned properly where it needs to be so now I'm going to set the nut to, to proper torque also torque down my idler sprockets as well and then we can start putting this all back together okay guys so that's basically it for the timing belt job on this car. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, I would say the most difficult part is probably just getting it in the service position. Um, like, like I showed you in those steps, as long as you mark the belt, uh, again, on a running car, you know the timing is correct. Mark the belt, transfer the marks, it makes timing so much easier than making sure your timing marks are in. Not to mention uh, the timing mark for the lower part of the timing belt is on the balancer, which means you need to have the cover and the balancer on when you put the belt on to make sure everything is lined up right. Um, so if you just make mark, transfer them, timing belt is so much easier. 
So, if you guys have any questions, feel free to always leave me a comment. I'm pretty quick about answering them. Uh, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share the videos. I'll see you guys next time.